Hello, welcome to my channel. For years, um, we have been told to eat more raw vegetables and fruits and to bake our meats instead of frying them as we've been told that it was healthier. And we've been told that it's better to have, well, I don't, I remember them saying that um, certain fats were good fats that fight the bad fat in our bodies. And I believe that was unsaturated fats were considered the good fat that fights off the bad fat in our bodies. And those unsaturated fats, um, they're liquid at room temperature and they consist of polyunsaturated fat and monounsaturated fat. And it's found in foods such as salmon, tuna, sardines, fatty fish, kippers, mackerel, herring, rainbow trouts, avocados, nuts, like walnuts, hazelnuts, macadamia nuts, pecans, pistachios, peanuts, soy nuts, pine nuts. Some nuts are said to have that, well, they're said to contain some saturated fats as well. Tofu, pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, flax seeds, hemp seeds, olive oil, canola oil, rapeseed oil, peanut oil, sunflower oil, corn oil, safflower, soybean oil, peanut butter, dark chocolate, olives, um, some of the other types of nut butters. Some beans contain very little fat, which is unsaturated fat. Some eggs, they say the majority of fat in eggs are said to be unsaturated fat, where some people, some of the lists show that egg yolks are saturated fat. So there's some confusion there. And polyunsaturated fat, which is also an unsaturated fat, because can, remember it consists of polyunsaturated fat and monounsaturated fat. Polyunsaturated fat is found in foods such as fatty fish, some nuts such as walnuts, some seeds such as flax seed, corn oil, sorbine oil, sunflower oil, where saturated fat, those are solid at room temperature. And those are the ones that like chicken wings, chicken thighs, milk, cheese, cottage cheese, butter. And some of these diets now are saying that you should just eat a lot of fat. And those fats include saturated fat as well, which is chicken wings, chicken thighs, milk, cheese, cottage cheese, butter, sour cream, cream cheese, ice cream, coconut oil, large shortening, cocoa butter, palm oil, palm kernel oil, ground beef, sausage, bacon, lamb, pork, poultry with skin, liver, kidney, bologna, salami, pepperoni, some eggs or egg yolks. Um, and when, when we used to go on a diet, we would try to choose that what we thought was the healthier option. And we always felt that unsaturated fat was the healthier option, like I said, such as salmon, tuna, sardines, fatty fish, um, rainbow trout, herring, avocados, um, some eggs, some most of the nuts, pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, flax seeds, hemp seeds, olive oil, canola oil, uh, corn oil, things like that, dark chocolate, peanut butter, olives, and beans, and eggs, some of the eggs. So we're going to look at that today so that you can see the difference because you know i don't know which scientists are, are right and which ones are wrong but let's take a look so this is a nutrition fact sheet and it says top five reason to enjoy healthy fats is to maintain radiant skin manage weight lower risk of heart disease absorb healthy sustaining vitamins Stabilize your blood sugar levels. And then it shows you um, some of the types of fats. Eat more of these fats. And it gives you the list. Eat less of these fats so that you can see them. And this is what I grew up learning as far as I can remember. I, I really didn't like eating meat a lot. 
and everybody kept encouraging me to eat more meat. I did like tuna fish and stuff like that, but I didn't like, I, I didn't like I, to eat much meat. I did like to eat peanut butter and things like that. And it, adults were always telling me to eat, you know, these other foods. And I remember they always told me that potatoes were bad for me too. And then I found out that potatoes are packed full of nutrition. Then they said it was all these things that I add to the potatoes like butter and fat and cheese. But now they're saying those things are not bad. And they're telling us to quit counting the calories. And we used to count calories. So... And then here's this nutrition sheet that says, talks about having peanut butter or nut butter on an English muffin or whole wheat toast. And they're giving you healthy options like avocado and hummus. And most of the diets that I see now show people eating eggs and avocados and things like that. And salmon and seafood. So I find it interesting that they're still showing that. And here's another sheet if it comes back up. Well, it's not a sheet. It's a website. And see, it shows the pictures. And it talks about unsaturated fats. We all need some fats, or more correctly, we need their fatty acids as part of our normal diet. All fats deliver fat-soluble vitamins and provide, I don't know what that word is, kilojoules or something for fuel and some unsaturated fatty acids are essential contributing to the structure of the brain and are also vital for membranes around every body cell. However, not all fats are equal and some types of saturated fatty acids play a role in heart disease and now they're questioning that and so I'm not sure because it seems like it's coming into question now. And trans fat produced when vegetable oils are processed for use in crisp textured food and some frying fats should be eliminated. But now they're saying they don't need to be. And that they're not, because it rotates. Like who's the bad guy? Salt's the bad guy, then salt's not bad. You know, and, and now sugar. But then the imitation sugars, it's, a lot of times they said they were, just as bad, if not worse, than sugar because your body was reacting to them. And some of them had um, an ingredient in them in the imitation sugar that was supposed to be really bad. Aspartame or aspartame. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, but yes, that, that came out. It was saccharin. It was saccharin was really bad. And they had posters in the store about how saccharin was bad. And then they had to take it off the market. And I don't know if aspartame or aspartame was the new one or what. But we're looking at saturated fats and unsaturated fats and the difference. So you can see it. And I'm not going to read it all to you. But here talks about forms of the Mediterranean diet, which when they replace saturated fats, unsaturated fats can help reduce blood cholesterol levels and lower the risk of heart disease. And some proteins and fibers are said to help make you feel fuller for longer so that you eat less. And then this gives you a list. I couldn't find a complete list, but I found some lists. So I tried to take them down and read them to you so that you could see them. See, it says some eggs, which there's some confusion there. And some of these oils, they said not to eat. And it talks about monosaturated fats and polyunsaturated fats, which are also divided into two groups. And it talks about omega-3s. And you can pause this and read it. Tofu, see? Kangaroo meat? Interesting. So, there's some really good websites with this information. This one I wanted you to see. I wanted you to see this chart. This chart is... Um, here, we'll scroll up. Penn State Extension. Fat... fat 
fat facts the right amount for a healthy diet. And you can go there and you can read that website to see. But I wanted you to see this chart they have. It talks, it shows fatty acid profiles of common fats and oils. And it shows you the saturated fat, which they always used to say was so bad for us. And coconut oil is full of saturated fat, which people are now saying is healthy to eat and more healthy. But I'm not going to choose it because I grew up learning that saturated fat was not good. And now they're saying that some of it's good. And so pork fat has a lot less saturated fat than coconut oil, which is bacon fat. And I love bacon fat because it has so much flavor in it. And chicken fat would be like chicken skin. Remember how they said in the fat on the chicken, like chicken thighs? And they used to say not to pull the skin off, but and shortening. And then it shows cottonseed oil, salmon oil, uh, peanut oil. And salmon oil is a fatty fish. And that was supposed to be one of the good fats that help fight the fat, bad fats in your body. Um, sesame oil, olive oil, corn oil, avocado oil, sunflower oil, safflower oil, canola oil. So, I don't see olive oil. Oh, there it is. There's olive oils right there with canola. I mean, with corn oil. And here's canola oil right here. So, here's this chart. So that you can, you know, I would ask your doctor what he thinks. But, I just wanted you to have this chart. Because here I am planning my diet. Because I need to lose weight. And last time I needed to lose weight, I went on that summer size diet. And I lost like 50 pounds. But this time, to be totally honest with you, I need to lose 133 pounds. But I want to plan my diet carefully. I don't want to go with what this person says or what that person says. And I don't want to, I don't want to eat a lot of... You know, I like meat. So I want to eat a little bit here and there. But I'm not used to eating a lot. And I've got to, I've got to cut out the junk food. Cutting out the junk food to some people, it's, it's like a, a complete, you know, you think people that are overweight, a lot of people say they eat too much food, but they may not eat a lot of food at all. They may eat very little food, but what um, the summer size diet consists, considers funky foods. And cutting out the funky foods may end up being a complete diet change for some people. And those funky foods may be so full of calories that once you give up those foods, you may be eating more food, a lot more food than you did before. And you may not realize this, but let's say that, you know, if, if you're used to, if you're used to, I'm used to having a soda and a, a Coca-Cola a soda pop. For breakfast, like an RC or Dr. Pepper with potato chips for breakfast. And it's so full of calories. And then later on, I'll go get me something to eat. And I also like having my sweet tea. And I like usually have two soda pops a day. And I've given up soda pop, which is a step in the direction that I need to go to because I have to make a complete diet change. I usually don't eat until about noon because I don't get a lot of exercise. I don't need a lot of fuel and I'm not hungry. I've been depressed. And I think that part of the reason I've been depressed, it might be my eating, my, my bad choices in eating because I don't have a lot of energy. And when I went on that summer size diet years ago, and it's been a lot of years, when I gave up sugar and I came to the pot where I started giving up sugar after a month or two of giving up sugar, I had all this energy that I didn't have before. And I'm wondering if the sugar doesn't make me feel depressed from eating it. It may, you know, so now I have to change my lifestyle completely because giving up soda pop, I'm used to having two a day. And now I have to give up sweet tea. And I'm a southerner and I'm used to having sweet tea. And the sweet tea is packed full of sugar. So, and I used to put like six spoons of sugar in my sweet tea when I made it myself. 
if I just made it by the glass. And I'll go to some place now, a restaurant here, and the sh and the sweet tea was too sweet for me, which means it has more than six spoons of sugar in it. So now I'm trying to drink herbal teas, you know, like green tea and things like that, and put less sugar in it. So there's that. And and if I orange spice tea, I can drink that with very little sugar, but it's really hard for me to find it at the store. So it's a complete lifestyle change. And whereas I didn't used to eat till noon since I gave up soda pop a couple months ago, now all of a sudden I wake up and I'm hungry at 9 or 10 a.m. And I'm used to reaching for uh, like junk food, something unhealthy, like, and I, and if I can't have my soda pop and I can't have my sweet tea, then I'm thinking, oh, I can have hot cocoa and throw a little cappuccino mix in there and have something like that and eat a couple and eat like an egg and a little bit of sausage or something like that because I'm used to having junk food. So I'm used to, so I give up one funky food and then I'm replacing it for another one. So I have to drink lemon water and it's going to be difficult for me because I have to do a complete diet change and give up all these junk foods. You know, I have little candies around the house. I have chocolate covered cherries next to my bed. I have a, a bowl of candy bars, little candy bars on the table. You know, and I have I have candy all the way around the house. So I have to completely change my diet. And whereas people think that if you're overweight, you're eating a lot. But I don't eat. I eat very little. When me and my husband go out to eat or I eat meals, I eat like a bird. I eat very little. But I get all of these calories from like little candy bars, sweet tea, soda pop, and things like that. So when I get all these calories from that, I don't eat that many much food and you would think the sugar would give me energy but it doesn't so I just wanted to mention that and then I wanted to take a look at calories because you talk about because last time last time I went on that summer size diet somebody told me I they looked at me one of my friends that lived in the apartment complex I lived in she was a good friend she looked at me she's like wow you shed a person and it was only like within um, I think it was about three months, but it might have been six months total because I started out before I went on the diet like I'm doing now by giving up certain junk foods like soda pop and things like that. So, and then I had given up sweet tea, but then I went back on the sweet tea and it's almost out of the, I'm almost out of it in the fridge. I bought Milo's sweet tea. Love Milo's sweet tea, but... I wanted to look at the calories in these. So if we have if we have something that is considered an unsaturated fat like um, salmon, tuna fish, olives, avocados, how many calories are in those? Some of the places list avocados as a saturated fat. I don't know why it's listed as unsaturated here because I've seen avocados listed as a saturated fat. So that's interesting. I don't really want to go by. That's interesting. So let's look at see how many calories are in something like salmon and tuna fish compared to something like chicken and beef and sausage so because they're saying you don't need to count your calories but i grew up you know being told to count calories so i want to look at that because i don't want to eat a boatload of calories and whereas codfish has says 3.5 ounces so that's what they're looking at portion sizes 100 calories Duck has a lot of calories. Chicken is 200 calories. There's the beef. It's 280 calories. Bacon is 500 calories. So, let's see. 
Paddock is 110 calories. That's one of those unsaturated ones. Um, liver is a saturated fat, but it's only 150 calories. And it's easy for me to chew liver, basically. You know, steak, I don't really like steaks because I have to sit there and chew on them and chew on them and chew on them unless it's filet mignon, and I can't afford that. So muscles is only 90 calories. I wonder if that's considered unsaturated fat or not. I'm not sure. So ham is a saturated fat. It's 240 calories versus halibut isn't halibut. I think is unsaturated. I'm not sure, but I know haddock is. And that's 110 calories. Um, salmon is 180 calories. Sardines is 220 Whereas sausage is 320. So you can see that I'm probably going to lean. This is what I did when I went on the summer size diet. I, I was careful about the meats and I went more towards eating baked fish because they used to tell us to eat baked fish and not fried. So then I would eat baked fish and I would eat like salmon or cod or something like that. And now I feel, and there's tuna, and it's 180 calories compared to some of these. So this is just me and my opinion on some of it. And if you're going on a diet, you should always consult a physician, maybe a nutritionalist, someone who's a professional in this area. But these are some of the things that I'm looking at. While I'm deciding, I'm planning my diet. I've got to plan my diet. I've got to clean out my fridge. I've got to rearrange my cabinets so that when I go to reach for food, I will have snacks. And I want, because right now I don't have it all in my house. I'm making little changes while I'm getting ready, while I'm planning, and I'm trying to change everything. Instead of, and I'm not going to go. I don't want to overdo it. I want a lifestyle changes that I can stick with. And I don't want to go on a yo-yo diet and go on a diet, get off the diet, cheat on the diet, say, oh, I messed up and oh, I can't stick to it. Oh, I'm getting off the diet, that kind of thing. I want to change my lifestyle and get it back to where I have more energy, get more exercise. I want to have, you know, I think, I think we should all, I remember, you know, they say create a food journal and a workout journal. So when I create a food journal and I make a list of everything that I eat, I want to know what kind of nutrition's in the food, how much fat's in the food, um, you know, how many calories are in the food. If I feel that it's a good fat or a bad fat, I don't want to eat things that are fried instead of baked. I might want to have bacon sometimes and that's why I like the summer size diet because if I want to eat things like bacon and things like that it's better for me I feel to try to choose healthier fats but if I'm going to eat something like that I want to make sure that my body's able to digest it better and I like the summer size diet because it, it teaches me about digestion and what kind of foods I can eat together so that I can digest them. And I understand that eating foods that are high in protein keep me feeling fuller longer. And I understand that eating certain foods that are full of fiber keep me fuller longer as well. So, and I want healthy fibers. And there's healthy fibers in um, vegetables and fruits. There's also protein. You, you know, you think that you can't get protein if you're not eating as much meat, but there are certain fruits and vegetables that have a lot of protein in them. So I might do a video on that saying, hey, let's look at which fruits and vegetables are high in proteins because I know there's foods that are high in fiber would be like acorn squash, peas collard greens, artichokes, um, dark chocolate, avocados, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, chia seeds, nuts, seeds, apples, bananas, lentils, quinoa, oats, 
mangoes, berries, and these are shown in a lot of these diets now. These are foods that are high in fiber, but sweet potatoes are also high in fiber. Broccoli, kale, butternut squash, okra, cauliflower, peppers like bell peppers, carrots, and things like that. I don't know if you've looked this up. They're high in fiber. Foods that are high in protein are like um, avocados are also high in protein. Kiwi, apricots, berries such as raspberries, strawberries, um, blackberries, things like that. Bananas are high in protein. Oranges, cherries, grapes, cantaloupe, peaches, tomatoes. These are also listed in these diets. A lot of these diets show these pictures that I went over in another video show pictures of these things. Lentils are high in protein, peas, beans, sprouts, um, wild rice, Brussels sprouts, sweet potatoes, broccoli, artichokes, asparagus, quinoa, cauliflower, arugula, dandelion greens, beet greens, um, dairy foods, such as, of course you know this, cheese, yogurt, eggs, and things like that, are also high in protein. Bagels, oatmeal, multigrain bread, tortillas, and of course seafood and poultry and meats are high in protein. But you can get a lot of protein from fruits and vegetables as well. So I thought I should mention that. So I just thought that was interesting. And I remember they would tell us that potatoes or starch and potatoes or bad but then years ago I think it was back in the 40s I have a lot of cookbooks because I do a lot of research and they used to say that you should eat an egg a day and one of my wheels in food guys it says eat an egg a day a potato a day whether it's a regular potato or a sweet potato have a citrus fruit another fruit and a couple vegetables and that one of those vegetables should be like broccoli cauliflower cabbage something like that so I've seen that so much that I found that so interesting and I wanted to look at the nutrition in potatoes and to me, I don't want to eat potatoes. I don't want to add butter and cheese and all these and sour cream to the potato. I would rather have my potato boiled. And I think it does something to your insulin. And so I, I, I can't remember what it is. But for some reason, when I boil it and make potato soup, I want to make sure I have a lot of onions in there as well. So, and then I want to have other vegetables in there as well, you know, like, cauliflower or broccoli or something like that but I wanted you to see the nutrition in potatoes potatoes have they have pro five grams of protein it has vitamin C vitamin B6 let's go over here and look on the right potassium 897 milligrams of potassium 4.3, it says grams of protein, vitamin C, iron, vitamin B6, magnesium. So there's a lot of nutrition in potatoes. So I think there's more than that as well. But it talks about, this talks about the percentages. Um, 5 or 7%, vitamin C, 30%, potassium, 15%, vitamin B6, 10%. So, I'm not cutting potatoes out of my diet. Some people say they're bad. Some people say they're a starch. I just, when I look at all that nutrition, I'm not cutting potatoes out of my diet because I, 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 I don't see the point. Um, like I said, I, this is my choice. And you have to make your own choices and you have to discuss it with a professional and a doctor because I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm just somebody that's went on diets. I've been on diets in my lifetime. And I actually, the first time I gained weight was from going on a diet. I didn't need to lose weight, but a friend of mine wanted me to go on a diet with them. And I figured, well, I could lose five pounds maybe. But I didn't. I ended up gaining five pounds because when you need to lose five pounds going on a diet, probably isn't the best idea.
right? And going on a diet with a friend when you don't need to lose weight probably isn't a good idea. But I'm one of those nice people that I like doing nice things for other people. And I should, probably shouldn't have done it. But And then the second time I think I, I gained a lot of weight when I had one of my children. I was used to eating a certain way and I was still eating that way. And I wasn't getting the exercise. My first two children, I didn't gain any weight at all, but my third child, I did, and my fourth child, and, well, my first two children, after I had them, I was exercising and, and things like that, but then years later, when I needed to lose weight, like I said, I went on that summer size diet, wonderful, it was a wonderful diet for me, and her exercises were so easy for me to do, so... And, and now I can't find her little exercises. It was like stepping to the music and doing the step up and step down with the stair stepper and stepping forward and back and moving your arms and, and just like four steps and listening to music. So I can do that without her exercises. But I really liked her little, I, her exercise programs when she had that TV show with the easy exercises that I could do. It was very easy for me to do, and I enjoyed it, and it wasn't difficult. So I loved it, but I can't find them anywhere. So if you have any of those, from because it used to be on TV. Now I can't find it. And to me, that was just a perfect exercise regimen for me, you know, to start out with and to incorporate in my day. But that's my video for today. So please feel free to leave comments. You know, I'm going to start, I need to start drinking lemon water. And then they say not to have juices with the sugar in them. Some say you can and some say don't. Some say grape juice is so healthy. Orange juice is healthy. When we were children, they used to give us a little, I don't know how old you are, but when we were children, they used to give us a little cup of orange juice during the day as a snack, early on as a snack. Because we had healthy breakfast at school that, yeah, that was bacon and eggs and pancakes and things like that. I think it was like a quarter, 35 cents for breakfast. I think it was a quarter and then it might have went up to 35 cents. But I think it was a quarter for breakfast. We would get a full meal of breakfast at school for like a quarter. And it was a meal like we would eat at home, but I didn't get that at home. A lot of times at home I got cereal, but at school I get bacon and eggs pancakes, french toast, whatever, and milk for, or chocolate milk for a quarter. And then we would get a snack. I'm old. You can probably, you can't tell them with my voice that I'm old, but if you listen to what I'm saying, you'll tell I'm old. Um, that you would give us an orange juice because nowadays people are drinking these energy drinks and they would give us this little paper cup of orange juice for energy because they would say that orange juice was healthy. You know, so I'm going to buy orange juice. I'm going to buy orange juice, grape juice, cranberry juice, and things like that to replace my soda pop and my sweet tea. And then I'm going to try to drink lemon water. And i got to cut back on caffeine, but I don't want to, I don't want to cut back to the point that it's hardcore. So, and I want to have herbal teas. But I don't think they have caffeine in them. I'm not sure. But I'm used to having a lot of caffeine in my sweet tea and my chocolates and my soda pops. So I don't want to go too harsh through the caffeine withdrawals and the sugar withdrawals. So I'm having to I'm having to completely change my diet. And I suddenly I'm hungrier. And I don't have all the diet foods in my house, but I'm creating the videos as I'm going through and, and doing the research again and the studies and looking at the changes in the diets like Atkins. When I was younger, it was um, all protein, no carbohydrates. And now it's not. Now they've changed it and it's got some carbohydrates. So now it's an Atkins for lifestyle. So it's completely different. So, and I love that, and I love doing the research and studying. As they do the research, I love looking at other people's research and seeing what they say. So I'm going to do some more videos, and this is a long video, and I meant to keep it shorter. 
So anyway, I hope this helps you. Please feel free to leave comments and let me know if you're going on a diet and what your diet's going to entail and how it's gone for you if you've gone on a diet. Anyway, um, I don't have a lot of viewers, so <laughs> I love the comments. Maybe I'll get views later. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. If you watch this video, sorry that I'm rambling on and on. And have a great day. Bye-bye.